there was a thread I really wanted to talk to you guys about. It kind of, I think, would help shape how most people, fighting game players or otherwise, think about both the problems they're dealing with in the game and how to like articulate the things that are frustrating without jumping to nasty conclusions from the Legends of Runeterra subreddit. So if you don't know, Legends of Runeterra is the Riot card game. There's been a lot of people who are really upset with this like version of the game. One of the developers went in and was like, how I, a designer on the game, write game feedback. And it says, the core advice I'd give is describe your experience the way you might explain how you're feeling to a doctor. Yeah, you know, like, I tried to get near him and then he hit me with this normal that goes full screen. And you know, that happens to all of us, right? You wake up in the morning and you're getting hit full screen. But then when I get near him, it also doesn't feel so good. And then sometimes I got like a, something is in my neck when I get knocked down. It's like Ram's sword is just chopping me up. Like it doesn't feel so good. Doc, you got anything for that? And they're like, no, she's gonna keep getting buffed. A lot of players jump past this and go straight to solution, calling for specific changes in the game. This is bullshit. What they need to do is make it so that X is minus X, or this loses to this. Like a patient walking into a doctor's office and saying, please schedule me for an MRI for my left leg, prescribe me X medication for 14 days. Even if the patient is 100% right, the doc can't know until they've learned what the patient's symptoms are. You could be like, hey, they need to nerf this by doing X, and then they do that thing, and you're like, yes, I was so right. Sometimes the things that people suggest for nerfs are maybe not the right changes to make the character better or worse in a way that's good for the game. Like, it's not just about, is the character too strong? Make them worse. It's like, is the character too strong? Okay, what about them is too strong or what's too frustrating? Instead of the character being here, can you shift the power level so they're around the same way, but the things that are good are a little different so that it feels better to play against them, even if they're at a similar power level? You know, the way Happy Chaos was in the last version of the game, character's too strong, and also in a way that I think was too frustrating for people to fight against. I think his power level is a little lower, but not by that much in this version, but I think the things that he does that are strong are different and probably better for the overall health of the game, right? Instead of him shooting you to death from full screen, and you're just hoping that you can execution test yourself and dash in and get near him, it's like, okay, well, now he is a little bit more forced to run at you and fight you up close. Because of that, there's more interactions in like the middle of the screen and closer up rather than the interactions being all the way back here, him just shooting you. If someone sent the above message to a doctor, the doctor would have to guess what the person has diagnosed themselves with and what underlying symptoms might have caused that. It takes a lot of untangling. For example, one of my friends working on an MMO got a bunch of player feedback during an early beta, like, hey, I'm trying to run from this town, the starter town, to like the mid-level town, and this shit takes too long. You gotta run all the way there, it sucks. The lead producer collecting that feedback told the team that they should reduce the distance between zone A and zone B accordingly. Ripping out a chunk of the world map would have been a huge amount of work. That's just wild. Like all this stuff that you built, you just like rip it out of the world and you're like, whoop, now you just teleport over to this new zone. Instead, the designer said, the players are probably calling for a shorter distance because they're bored. There are a lot of monsters and hidden treasures there, but there are no quests to encourage players to look for that treasure or kill the monsters, right? So it's not just that the zone is too like far away. It's like all the stuff in the middle is cool, but there's nothing to get them there. So for players that already like exploring, like, you know, the walk's not too long, but the quest focus players aren't doing that. You know, if you say like, oh, this quest wants you to go from A to B, it's not like players are gonna like run and be like, oh, there's all this stuff in the middle. Maybe I should look around. They're like, no, I'm going to fucking B. Let's put a few quests there. It'll take one designer just a few days and then we solve the problem of not having to rip out half of our world or whatever is going on. That's not the player's fault. That's the lead producer's fault for coming up with a terrible solution. Yeah, that's the point. When the players described this issue, what they described was, this is too far. When instead you have to think about like, why does it feel like it's too far? It's not like they're there to be like, you guys are wrong. Like you players are all wrong. Like it's like they're trying to figure out the best solution to making everything both fun and cool for the players playing the game, but also not doing a change that is not good for the video game and it's just like reacting to feedback because you know sometimes when you're doing this stuff you think like okay this will make perfect sense for them to, to look here and do this and do that but like in actuality it's just not the case yeah if you ever dm'd in dungeons and dragons or played D, you're like okay there's a door they're definitely gonna try to open the door and they're like i try to dig through the ground and go around you're like what the fuck so it says this is the kind of thing that designers do with feedback all the time we look for the symptoms of the experience and build theories about why players feel the way they do, then look for solutions to the underlying issues. Instead of just going right to like, RAM is broken, make her far slash slower. What's actually happening? People are engaging with the character like this, 
this is what feels bad, this is what needs to be better or worse. As such, if giving playtest feedback, it's best to describe what you're feeling first and why you're feeling it. Include any information that helps us with the diagnosis too. Once you've provided this information, you can also give suggestions for what you think would help. So they're not saying, hey, don't tell us what to do. Explain why you think about the character this way. Then say, hey, okay, this is what I think would help make that feel better. You don't have to be right or wrong, but it's just a suggestion. And they say, here's a behind the scenes example. In XP1, Jinx was getting a special PVE only card as part of her adventure. The way Jinx works and like the way it works in this game is once she throws away her whole hand, she like levels up which is like her win condition. They are trying to design a card that just dumps your whole hand immediately, so you instantly level her up. This is the feedback I wrote about this card when I was testing it. I wasn't excited by this treasure card. I felt that it was an interesting utility option because I understood this would trigger her level up, but I wasn't confident that trading my cards in hand for a bunch of one cost mystic shots that only hit units would be a good thing, right? So it feels nice to level up the character, but like, do I wanna throw away my whole hand for it? Like, I like the cards in my hand, so. It, it feels counterintuitive to what the character wants to do. I was also worried that if my Jinx got removed, I might lose the game because I would have no proactive creatures in hand. So I want to use this card and I like the idea, but my fear is that if I use it, things could go really bad for me after and I'm just getting rid of all my best options to do it. All these new removal spells also made it feel hard to generate a super mega death rocket. When you have to empty your hand again to get the rocket. I naturally wanted to save the removal for scary enemy units that might show up. So while this treasure helps Jinx level up, it might be pretty hard to actually generate the iconic super mega death rocket. And I think I've only played a single rocket this whole time. So the feedback is not like, hey, this card sucks. The feedback is like, hey, this is what I don't like about it. This is what I want to do and I want it to feel strong, but it doesn't always feel like a, you know, a consistent option. This actually ultimately re was redesigned into the loose cannon. This card also helps you empty your hand, but it does so in a way that lets you play all your big expensive cards in a big burst of insanity instead. It solves all the issues I was having with the previous version and is more exciting to play with, right? So it helps you shape a more cohesive thought and feeling about the problems you're having with some kind of balance, whether it's your character or another character or another thing in the game, rather than just thinking about it like, this is cheap and it needs to be nerfed by doing X. If you recall the patch for Guilty Gear, like before the patch came out, I was saying Leo is a character who wants to do this. Like he wants to get near you. He wants to get in, go back turn, and then like one chance you and kill you in one hit. But the problem with the character is that although he is that archetype, it doesn't feel like it because he is so good at every position on the screen, right? Like he is so scary to deal with when he's in neutral. His fireball game is excellent. He has like best in class defense and he's heavy. He's got a lot of health. He's hard to combo and he has this one chance mix up potential. So like you want him to be able to get in one chance you with back turn because that's what Leo does, right? But when he gets it so easily in both neutral and on defense, and then if he's on offense, he obviously gets it as well. It just doesn't feel like it's like a struggle for him to get to that back turn compared to what it probably should be, right? So that's what I described Leo as like in the last patch. And that's not to say that those are the changes they need to make to make the character better or worse, but some of the changes they did make did hurt his neutral and did hurt his ability to like easily access back turn from, you know, that. And same thing with the DP change. It's the same kind of idea, right? And that's the way I think to both think about character balance, but also try to describe your issues with the character or what's happening. It probably gives you a more kind of open-minded approach to the different ways a character might be too strong or too weak or too frustrating or not exactly where you wanted and why they made the changes they make. You don't have to agree with their changes. It's not like every change you're like, dude, this change is so sick. Like sometimes you're like, why did they do that? <laughs> And you may understand their change and still think it's bad. Like old Sage M just said that all Gold Lewis needed was a seven frame 2K. Instead, they gave him like a drone. They made his fucking far slash better. And like all this, what are the, why do they do that? And like, it's clear that they valued improving his neutral and his ability to get in and then swing the big typhoon over making him a more like well-rounded character on defense. It's very clear they want you to be using that and typhoon and not playing him like a defensive counter poker or whatever. And for Anji, why Anji doesn't just get straight buffs and become the best character is they don't want the character whose game plan is like spinning and countering through all the stuff that you do to just be super good. Even changes you don't agree with, you can probably come up with a reason for why they did them. Even the the Wind Orb for Swiftmaster, I mean, to me, if I was targeting the character, he's excellent at every position on the screen. I think the problem is you cannot move 
effectively against him. And the reason is his 5B and 5A and how hard it is to get over success most of the time. So as much as like, I think that orb is annoying, how far and how advancing his 5B goes and how fast he moves and his jab and how good it is at catching you, I think are way more annoying to me than the orb. I think the orb is at least a cool move. Like I think how this post is phrased is how I talk about most things. I don't say like guard cancel fucking sucks. They need to buff that shit. I say like, the problem with guard cancel for me is that you have to use it because if you don't, you get guard broken. But when you use guard cancel, you get like a neutral situation. You're both stood back up. You're now down 100 mana. And then if your opponent just runs at you and hits you, I'm going to get guard broken, right? So like it doesn't feel good to use. I'm in the same position I was before. It's just like it happens five seconds later. But at the same time, I have to use it. To optimize your use for it, you have to wait until your opponent does a mana move. So that when you use it, you can guard cancel and then spend conversion right after. My opponent also gains conversion by getting hit by guard cancel, by the way. So when I guard cancel, I have to flail after or I'm not going to have any mana and I'll die. My feedback is like, this is why I feel this way and this is why I don't like it. It's a much better way than being like, I died to Nago. Uh, Nago is cringe or I died to Ram. Ram is broken. It's like, yeah, we figured that part out. Like we know this character is really good, but like, what is it that is too effective, right? Or what is it that's not in line with where it needs to be? And I think ideally you want all the characters to feel like their game plan and their vision of what the character's like power fantasy is to feel good to do. Listen. Marvel 3 is the all time biggest discrepancy between how fun the game is in training mode versus how unfun it is to lose in. It is maybe the best training mode game. It's really high up there. Yeah, losing in that game is really dreadful, but at the same time, they're barbaric like getting hit in the head with a rock deaths compared to like, I think dying in like Injustice 1 or Injustice 2 is so much more horrendous. It's just like a series of slow interactions that dwindle you down. It's so hard to do something sometimes and you're like, well, 